Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at a new all-in-one flight controller and this is called the HLRC Zeus. Now this is not just an all-in-one flight controller, this has the ESCs also built in. So think of it as a mini Asgard. However, some of the specs are a bit disappointing maybe. Um, the only thing that I saw was disappointing was the fact that it can it's rated up to a 3S LiPo. However, I'm possibly pretty sure it can handle a 4S, not sure, but I will be testing that once we build it. Uh, so just some quick specs over this. This is an F4 flight controller with Betaflight OSD, and it does have a ESC, 4 and 1 ESC, 4 ESCs built into it also. And each ESC is rated up to 15 amps, and the max <coughs> burst current is 25 amps for 10 seconds, which is very good. So it's a BB2, BB2 chip, and it's running DSHOT 600. So overall, it's pretty cool. It's like a mini Asgard in a way. And the layout looks pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, seems, you know, I really can't say nothing about it right now. The layout seems good, uh, but once we build it, then we can actually get to see how good it's built. Now, let's check some of the things here, for example. Uh, as you can see here, it is a 20 by 20 millimeter uh, mounting hole solution. So this will be on a micro or something that allows a 20 by 20 uh, flight controller setup. However, I don't recommend you putting this on like a five inch quad since it's rated up only to a 3S. So this would be kind of in the uh, three inch, like anywhere between a micro all the way up to possibly a four inch. Probably a four inch would be a little bit pushing it unless you are uh, running a 3S on it. So three, I, I would recommend you stick it up to three inch quadcopter maximum here. Um, <clears throat> and overall the design looks pretty good. It's probably from a different manufacturer uh, because you know you don't really get the QC pasta sticker on any of their products and I have a bunch of their products and um, yeah. But overall they I've never had issues with these except they, they did have a couple bad flight controllers that they've made. The ones with the VTX built in. Those are just terrible. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and start taking a look at the pads here So it is rocking an MPU 6000 gyro, which is the good gyro, which is the gyro we always want to see um, It's talking through the SPI protocol. Uh, it is a F4 processor like I mentioned before running two to maximum input voltage 2 to 3 S This is what they're stating uh, Betaflight OSD it has a 5 volt regulator and 16 megabytes for black box logs. It supports everything S bus PPM and spectrum uh, and DSM2 for Spectrum. So that's a big plus. And um, yeah, let's just take a look at it here. So I see in the in the description here, it's saying it's coming with one capacitor. And I really want to just quickly take a look at this cap here. What kind of capacitor is it? It's a Hua Hua Long. Yeah, I don't think it's a Lowy Star. Anyways, so it does come with a capacitor. There is possible noted noise while they were possibly testing this. So that's something to take note of. Um, the the wires here are not silicone, they're that stiff wire that just melts, so that's also something to take note of there. And uh, yeah, let's begin taking a look at the pads now. So as we can see here, I see a number three, and a number four, and a number two, but I don't see a number one here. So this in theory would be put into your quadcopter like so. We would have the USB sticking out to the left, and we have our battery terminals on the bottom here. So this would be motor one, two, three, four. So it's perfect beta flight orientation, which is awesome, and that's what we want to see. And as you can see here, here we have our OSD chip. All right, so let's just take a look at the pads up here. Let's just spin this guy around. So you can see we have, all right, so we have RX6 and TX6, RX3 and TX3. We have five volt cam ground, that's good. They're right next to each other. That makes our life a lot easier here. All right, I just had to fix the camera because the focus was just getting annoying. So as you can see, we have the cam here. We have 3.3 volt, which is very good, right next to the spectrum stuff. So that's right there. Uh, we have PPM, if you're gonna use PPM, here's SBUS obviously, five volt and ground. So that's very good. So let's just say, for example, you had a spectrum uh, receiver. So you would put 3.3 volts, which is the positive red wire, and you put the ground here, and you put the signal right here. If you're running PPM, such as a FlySky or an FRSky, you would set up 5 volt and ground for the power, and set it up to PPM or SBUS. But FlySky, IBUS does not usually work on SBUS, so you would have to set it on one of the RXs here. So for example, we set it on RX3 for IBUS, then in the beta flight ports tab, you would set the serial RX for UART3 if it's on RX3 and if it's on RX6 you would do the UART6 and you should be good to go. Alright, and let's take a look at the backside here. 
So I have a feeling that I could be wrong. We're going to check right now its capacitance. We're going to see um, if the VTX port here has some sort of filtration. And that's what we're going to check right now. So obviously this would be the power for the from the battery. So there's your positive, there's your ground. And here would be the positive for your uh, VTX and uh, your ground for your VTX. And this is where your VTX would go. So the yellow, the yellow wire would go to your VTX right here. So in theory, when you connect your cam, the signal will go through here, pop through this guy, and then come out through this guy all the way to your VTX, and that which is what broadcasts down to your goggles. So that's also um, that. Well, that's how it works, really. Taking a look at the backside, we do see some nice fat capacitors, but not as much as I would like to see. But you know, trade up to a 3S, so I really can't say much right now until we get it tested and see how it works. So let's quickly check if we have just a direct line between the positives here for the VTX or it is passing through some sort of filtration. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. So just let me prepare the let me prepare the setup here and I'll be right back. Alright, so the VTX pads here seem to be getting the direct power from the battery and um they don't seem to have any filtration or just slightest filtration but nothing spe special or um let's just say separate for the vtx it is getting the same exact filtration as the positive and negative coming from the battery so this is why they possibly gave us this capacitor here they, they might introduce some noise but however we will figure this out and we, as we set it up and take it out for its first flight um overall i do like this I wish it was rated a little bit higher, but I mean, you could only fit so much in such a tiny place. And um, yeah, and it seems pretty good. I mean, the quality looks pretty well done. I don't see anything looking retarded anywhere around here. You know, like, just a, it just seems like a very clean board. So, I mean, I really can't say much right now until we build it and we take it out for a flight. And um, that's all, that's all I could really say right now, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.